Welcome back. This is going to be one of the first videos in a series about resonance. With our introduction to resonance, we need to, of course, start talking about what is resonance and why are we using it. Now, in general chemistry, you did look at resonance, but there was very little understanding going on. Now that we're in organic chemistry, we understand some more background information. It's time to really dive into resonance because we're going to be using this throughout the entirety of the semester, so we really have to have it down. Resonance is used when one drawing of a structure just isn't enough. What happens when we draw Lewis structures and bond line structures is we're trying to illustrate where the electrons are. You know, that's what we're doing when we draw these pi bonds, these double bonds and triple bonds. When we put in the lone pairs, when we put in the formal charges, we're trying to indicate where the electrons are. And sometimes one structure doesn't do a good enough job. Sometimes you need more than one structure to really illustrate where your electrons are. And that is why we utilize resonance, which is really just a series of structures that we can look at on a sheet of paper and mentally average so that we can figure out where the electrons are. Now you might be thinking, why do I want to know where the electrons are? Well, that's like all of organic chemistry. I mean, that's why reactions happen is through movement of electrons and to get to something that's more stable. So we really do need to know where electrons are in the structure. I have a diagram down here. Um, the structure that I've drawn in on the left is a very typical uh, uh, drawing. It's called an allylic carbocation. And when we look at this, what your general chemistry brain says is you have a extra pair of electrons in that pi bond that I've just highlighted in blue. So if I asked you where the pi electrons are, and mind you, pi electrons are those that make up pi bonds. And remember, double bonds are one sigma and one pi. So pi electrons. Um, when I look at this structure, you are going to see something different. I, I see a bigger picture because I have more experience. And you're going to look at this and say, hey, I got a carbon here and a carbon here, and they're sharing this extra pair of electrons, so my pi electrons must be between those two carbons. And that's not really true. This one structure isn't enough to show us where the pi electrons are. And that's what this figure on the right-hand side is supposed to be illustrating. What happens is, instead of the pi electrons just being locally in that one area, like they're localized, they're actually going to be shared over a series of atoms. We can draw another structure that looks like this, which illustrates that the pi bond isn't really just between those two atoms. The pi electrons are going to be spread throughout the entire structure here. And I'm going to show you just the first kind of intro to resonance. So we got the brackets, the double-headed arrow, and this is what a set of resonance structures is going to look like for this allylic carbocation. It's okay that you don't know what allylic is yet. We're going to get to that. If we look at the right-hand side, this picture is of the same carbocation. Remember, carbocation is a carbon that's positive because a cation is a positive ion. And in this carbocation, they're just drawing it in, you know, a Lewis con type condensed format. And I drew mine in skeletal, but it's the same structure. And what they're illustrating is this double bond isn't solely living between those two carbons. And one of the things that happens when we're looking at resonance is a huge misunderstanding. And I don't even want to tell you what the misunderstanding is right now. I just want to show you what's really happening. What's really happening is at the carbon that has the positive charge, there's an empty p orbital there. Remember, a positive charge is a lack of electrons, and when you have a carbon that's positive, that means it only has three bonds, which means it's sp2 hybridized. If it's sp2 hybridized, well, you got a p orbital that didn't get hybridized, so where's that p orbital? It's just on that carbon, just hanging out. We have that empty p orbital present on the carbon that we've drawn the positive charge on. In addition to that, your pi bond is made from p orbitals that are sharing electrons. You have a p orbital here for the pi bond, and here for the pi bond, and then here for empty. 
but is it really empty? Because when we look at the sharing of electrons through two p orbitals, what we said was that if, if one forearm is a p orbital and my other forearm is a p orbital, when those p orbitals get close to one another and they overlap, they share their electrons. Now you just have more than two p orbitals. So shouldn't the electrons just be being shared throughout the whole thing? Aren't these electrons shared over every p orbital that's parallel to it? And the answer is yes, but it's also mind boggling, right? I'm not expecting you to understand resonance right off the bat. It doesn't work that way. It's gonna take a bunch of practice. And when we look at these structures and we consider the one on the left and the one on the right, neither of these really exist. What really exists is a blend of the two. And we're gonna to get to that deeper later on. It's called the resonance hybrid. Let's talk a little bit more about resonance. What we said was that resonance does is there because one structure doesn't do a good job of showing where the pi electrons are. So you need another set. You need another structure. And I've drawn the same allylic carbocation here. And if I draw the resonance structure for this allylic carbocation, it's gonna look like this. When you're drawing resonance structures, you are indicating that they are resonance structures by having a double-headed arrow between the resonance structures and then putting the whole system in brackets. If we happen to have a set of resonance structures that had more than two resonance structures, if there were three or four, there would be a double-headed arrow between each structure and then the whole darn thing would be in brackets. Now, just a moment ago, I said that the resonance hybrid is what actually exists. And this is where the misconception comes into play. A lot of times students will think one of two things. One thing that they'll think is that the two structures that I've drawn are actually the same structure. And that's not true, but I understand where that's coming from. Because in a earlier video, we said, oh, well, isn't, you know, this alcohol the same as this one just rotated 180 degrees? And here, you need to know that we're not worried about rotating anything. We're, we're just trying to keep the structure written the same way. So we're not indicating that these are the exact same structure, just rotated. That's not res what resonance is. But it certainly looks that way to your eyeball. So when we draw the first resonance structure and then we draw the second one, we're trying to illustrate that the, no the carbons the skeleton of the structure stays the same in the same order. The second misconception is, I think, with the word resonance. You know, when you think about resonance, a lot of times my students think about, you know, resonating. And then when they think about resonating, they think about movement or they think about like oscillation, right? They think about going back and forth. And this is the biggest misconception where sometimes people will think that there's a flip-flopping happening, right? Like if this is uh, this, where the electrons are right now, in 30 seconds, the electrons are gonna be over here and then it's gonna flip back and then it's gonna flip back and there's no flip-flopping. No, no flip-flopping is happening. In the Klein textbook, and David Klein's textbook is my favorite, uh, what he says is think about um, a nectarine. You know, what? what is a nectarine? A nectarine is essentially a mixture of a peach and a plum. Let's imagine that our left-hand side structure is a peach and this one is the plum. For resonance, neither the peach or the plum exist. The nectarine is its own separate thing. It's a mixture of components from the peach and the plum that have combined and now it's its own entity. That's what the resonance hybrid is. The resonance structures are looking at each of the individual components that contribute to the hybrid, but the hybrid is what actually exists. If we look at the hybrid, the hybrid is going to be the skeleton of the structure, so all the sigma bonds that didn't change. And then we can look at where the pi electrons are. 
So in our peach version, the pi electrons are from carbon between carbon one and two, and in the plum version, they're between carbon two and three. So really, there's pi electrons all through this area. When the pi electrons are being shared over more than two atoms, then we draw them as dashed bonds because it's not really a full bond. It's a partial pi bond at that point because a full pi bond would be sharing two electrons between two atoms. You're sharing two electrons between three atoms. Then we have to look at where our positive charge is. Our positive charge in the peach version is on the left-hand side, and in the plum version, it's, nope, got my lefts and right mixed up. <laughs> in one version, it's on the left-hand side, and one version, it's on the right-hand side. And what we see then is we have one positive charge that's in two different locations on our resonance structures. Therefore, this is communicating that we have a plus one half on this side and a plus one half on this side. Remember, we're getting the one half because we have one positive charge shared over two different locations. This thing here, this is the resonance hybrid. And this is your nectarine. We, it, our nectarine is not sometimes a peach and sometimes a plum. It's always a nectarine. It's always a hybrid of the peach and the plum. And that's what you really want to make sure that you're aware of. There's no movement. There's no flip-flopping. The resonance hybrid is its own thing. We draw a series of resonance structures to imagine a resonance hybrid. Why all this talk about resonance anyway? Why is resonance so darn important? It's all about stability. It always is. What we're looking for is an explanation for why certain reactions happen, why reactions take different pathways, why are some molecules just so stable? And a lot of the times that deals with resonance. Resonance gives a stabilizing effect. If we look at the figure over here on the right hand side, this is a set of resonance structures. And in this set of resonance structures, this looks very similar to what you would have done or drawn in general chemistry. And it's showing how it appears as if you have a pi bond here sometimes and a lone pair here sometimes, and then over here a pi bond and a lone pair. Now, in general chemistry, that's probably totally what you thought, right? You totally thought that there was movement and flip-flopping, but like our peach and plum and nectarine example just illustrated to us, there's no flip-flopping, right? These are just going to be averaged for the resonance hybrid. Now, this idea of sharing electrons over multiple atoms, right, that leads to stability. And the idea of sharing electrons over multiple atoms is called delocalization. Now let's stop and think about localized versus delocalized. Localized means in one area. Imagine you go to the dentist to get a tooth out. They don't give you aspirin. They give you an injection right next to your tooth. The injection right next to your tooth is localized. Something that would be delocalized would be something like aspirin, where any pain in your body, the pain receptors are gonna get shut down when you have that painkiller that goes through your entire body. What's happening here in our electrons is delocalization of the pi electrons, where those pi electrons, so the electrons that make up pi bonds, are being shared over multiple atoms, so more than two. What this figure is showing is you have an oxygen, we're gonna call this oxygen one, and oxygen two, and oxygen one, and oxygen two. And down here, we're taking this structure and illustrating the orbitals, where it's saying, hey, in this figure, it looks like you have a double bond here. And in this figure, it looks like you have a double bond instead over here. But in actuality, you don't have a double bond in either of those places. What you have is 
pi electrons being shared over all three p orbitals. Your resonance hybrid then looks like this. You have your single bonds drawn, because your single bonds aren't changing in resonance structures. It's only the pi electrons. And we put in our oxygens, and we're illustrating that we have electrons being shared through this carbon oxygen all the way to this carbon oxygen. And then we can put in a charge. We have one negative charge for our structure that's being shared over two atoms. How do I know it's being shared over two atoms? Well, here I've got an oxygen that's negative, and over here I have an oxygen that's negative. I have one negative charge shared over two oxygens, so I have a negative one-half and a negative one-half. That's my resonance hybrid, and these orbitals are meant to be showing that the electrons are shared all through here, all through those p orbitals. That's what the beauty of the p orbitals are. When the p orbitals are parallel to one another, they're just going to share the electrons through that system. It's called a p uh, system or a pi system. Now you might notice I purposefully didn't put on my lone pairs on my oxygen. And I did that because it can get really confusing when you start putting lone pairs on the resonance hybrid. And so I personally leave those off uh, like some of other textbooks do. I want you to look at the set of resonance structures that I've drawn and do your best to draw the resonance hybrid that correlates to this. Go ahead and pause me. Give yourself a moment to walk through it. And then when you're ready, unpause. Now that you're back, let's draw some resonance hybrids. The first thing I'm gonna do is look at my carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna draw out my five carbons and the single bonds. Because remember, it's the pi electrons that are doing the unusual stuff here and being shared over multiple atoms. On my left-hand side structure, I'm showing pi electrons being shared here. On the structure on the right, I'm showing pi electrons being shared here. Now I can put in the positive charges. Here I have a positive charge, and here I have a positive charge. I have one positive that is in two different locations when I look at my two different resonance structures, and that's how I know I have a one-half, right? So if you're trying to figure out what the fraction is, the, the numerator of the fraction is how many of that charge you have. The denominator is how many places that charge shows up in your resonance structure, so I have two. I have a plus one-half here and a plus one-half here. And that is my resonance hybrid. For the next one, again, I'm going to do the same type of thing. I'm going to draw in my electrons or my bonds that don't change. So these are the things that don't change are my single bonds. On the left-handed structure, I have a pi bond here, so I'm going to draw a dashed bond there. On the right-handed structure, I have a pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen, so I'm going to put my dashed bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Remember that we're using dashed bonds because the dashed bonds are illustrating that it's not a complete double bond. If it was a complete double bond, we wouldn't be drawing it as dashed. What we're trying to do is show that a pair of electrons is being shared over multiple atoms, so it's not a complete, complete pi bond. It's a partial pi bond. Now we can come in and include our charge. We have a negative charge and it's shared over two atoms. Therefore, I have a minus one half and a minus one half because I have a negative on this carbon and I have a negative on the oxygen. Let's wrap up. In this video, we started talking about resonance. What you wanna know is that resonance is a stabilizing effect. We call it resonance stabilized or resonance stabilization. We wanted to talk about why resonance structures are used and learn the words delocalized or delocalization as well as localized. We wanna make sure that we know the proper notation for resonance structures is that we draw them with double-headed arrows between the structures and within brackets. This concept is going to be huge for the remainder of organic chemistry, so you really need to make sure that you spend a significant amount of time on resonance. Thanks for your attention. I'll see you in the next resonance video. This is Katoni signing out.